Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom or Tom. How was it going? Oh, Tony, I regret to inform you I have taken a job with the Los Angeles Chargers. You know it's official because I remember where they play now, so I am going to the right city. Um, getting out of town right before the uh, podcast police come after us for, you know, you know. Mm. W- well, okay, but as long as you're leaving all of your best podcast assistance behind for me to make this show sustainable and what it has been, that that sounds fantastic. And is that exactly what you'll be doing? Uh, I don't know if you've been familiar with the show that I do, uh, the morning show, but uh, you are, in fact, my best podcast assistant. So good luck with all that. Uh, so welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. We are here to talk about uh, Sharon Moore taking over the Michigan football program. Announced on Friday, I believe, that he would be taking over for Jim Harbaugh. It was the, the worst kept secret or the worst kept assumption in the uh, the college football world. As uh, we were all just waiting for that to be announced. There was some sort of seven-day time frame that you had to wait on. And I heard like they petitioned the governor to... Shorten that, but the governor was a Michigan State grad, so like big grads didn't want to do it. This is all stuff I'm just hearing on on, on the radio. It's like this is very very involved, uh, but uh, they still did not wait the seven days, and instead go ahead and named Sean Moore the head coach. I, I'm not frankly in my shock they broke rules to uh, to name this head coach, but um, time let us digress. So Sharon Moore is in at Michigan announced on Friday that he would be taking over and Jim Harbaugh off course to Los Angeles ahead of um, any kind of trouble that might be coming his way. Who's to say really what's going to happen there, but also leaving with Jim Harbaugh is defensive coordinator, Jesse Minter and strength coach, Ben Herbert. There was some hope from the Michigan side of things that Herbert would stick around but on Tuesday or on Monday, it was reported that he is going to be headed to Michigan or to Los Angeles as well with Jim Harbaugh. Both of those losses are significant for Michigan. Ben Herbert considered by many to be the best strength coach going the past couple of years, past few years, and you've seen the results of that. Jesse Minter, of course, steps in and does a fantastic job as defensive coordinator for Michigan. Now, Sharon Moore, looking around, lost the defensive coordinator coordinator that lost the head coach of the defense, lost the other head coach of the football team. I don't know that everybody understands what a strength coach is. And they are essentially the head coach of the team for seven, eight months of the year. And so now you've got to just, uh, you've also got to replace those people. Now it looks like um, Ben Herbert's right-hand man will just take over. So you're seeing a lot of... Um, Interior or in, in, interior hire, in, inside hires, um, which can be good, can be bad. You won't know just yet, but Sharon Moore looking around, and this is not going to be the same Michigan program that he took over, and he'll try to make it his own. And uh, it's it's not going to be as easy as I think he would have liked. No, for sure. Keeping Ben Herbert would have been a big, big deal. For Mich- for the Michigan program, as you said, that is the head coach of the program, more or less, for the seven-ish months of the season when it's not spring football and it's not fall camp and it's not the season. Ryan Day is not out there with those guys during January. Ryan Day is not out there with those guys during May or July. That is that is Coach Mick time, and at at Michigan, that was Coach Ben time, and now it's not, and the issue with losing guys, it was, yes, those are two guys, two very, very big pieces of the puzzle for Michigan to the point that I think you might see more of a direct impact on the Michigan program from losing a Jesse Minter than you do from losing a Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, he's the head coach, but Jesse Minter was so impactful there on the defensive side of the ball. And now that it's not a Harbaugh sitting in the big office, I don't know if John Harbaugh is going to be sending people there anymore or not. Maybe, but maybe not. That has been a really big piece of their turnaround, as has the strength piece. And you have seen plenty of guys get replaced over the years, and 
th- th- this is part of the job is finding new coaches to replace people. No one bats a thousand on this. That's the, that's the issue. It's not that you couldn't have, you know, the, the second in command takes, you know, one step up and now he's the guy who's in charge and sure, just do all the same stuff you did last year. And, and sure that can work. Maybe they go internal higher on the defensive side of the ball too. Maybe. And it's just, well, do all the same stuff you did last year. Sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. That is a different job than whoever else is, you know, stepping into that position. And all you have to do is look at coaches who have lost assistance off of their staffs. Think about Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer had Tom Herman come in and boy, did the offense look great. And then Tom Herman left. And then it was like, well, Ed Warner and Tim Beck, it's they're internal. It's going to be fine. They just do the same stuff. And Sometimes it is not quite that simple. Sometimes you end up with, you know, a, a real strong internal hire as a defensive coordinator like Luke Fickle. And sometimes you end up with Kerry Combs and it can go either way. But even even really big name coaches, Nick Saban has had some not great coordinator hires. Urban Meyer has had some not great coordinator hires. Dabo Sweeney has had some not great coordinator hires. Now Sharon Moore has to figure it out and he has to do it right away on day one. And that's potentially, potentially going to be a challenge. I wonder if it's harder to get the coaches, the assistant coach hires right as a new head coach or as a veteran head coach, because we've seen both of those kinds of coaches really miss on who they hire. And I guess it's maybe just like, drafting players or recruiting players, you're never going to bat a thousand. You can only um, do your research and pick the guy that best fits what you do. But as a guy who is hiring people for the first time and putting a staff together, depending on how far out of he has to go for all of these guys, and some guys are still going to stay. I, th- I assume Mike Hart is going to stay and things like that. But the um, just that process of picking the right guy and who you lean on and who you go to uh, to get that advice. I'm sure he'll talk to Jim Harbaugh. I don't know how well Jim Harbaugh returns calls. I, like if you're the NCA, he does not. Um, stuff like that, <laughs> of course. But the, um, the the Jim Harbaugh, the John Harbaugh thing, like, do, do you see um, – I, I don't see John Harbaugh sending anybody else to Michigan. I also don't see him sending them to the Chargers, to his brother, now that they're in the same – conference and you know f- vying for the same thing but now you're just gonna have to Sharon Moore's gonna have to do it on his own obviously there will be some you know the, the coaching tree is there and um, the, the fraternity is the fraternity but you've still got to make the hires now and I think one of the main things with this hire is that you wanted to prevent some sort of a mass exodus that you've seen at all of these other major schools that have gone out of the programs to get um, to get their hires. You know, once Alabama, once Nick Saban left, that threw, threw everything for a loop, and we saw however many guys, at least 10 guys, jump in after that, after 20 being in before Nick Saban. And, of course, you see the Washington transfers and then the Arizona transfers following these coaches around. This should limit that, but you're still those guys. And there, there's honestly only a handful, I think, at Michigan right now that the nation would look at and be like, we could use you. And it will be interesting to see what kind of um, you know desire on the players part there is to look around or put feelers out and things like that. Or how many people are reaching out to their high school coaches like, hey. How's your guy? How is he feeling? Because these are some desirable players, and I'm talking about Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Will Johnson. I'm not trying to put a shopping list together for anybody. I wouldn't need to. All of the everybody knows, but does this make them less likely to leave? In your opinion, Tom, or does just the added chaos, especially on the defensive side of the ball, make them more likely to go? I think. Anytime you hire internally, it's always going to help with keeping your 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 roster together. I think back to the end of the John Cooper era and, you know, talking to Ohio State players in the days and weeks after that, and there was a really strong groundswell among the players that they really wanted Fred Pugich to be retained and to be the, 
next head coach of Ohio State. He was the defensive coordinator. They want an internal guy because they want someone they know. This is the old, the devil you know versus the devil you don't. You bring in, if you keep things in-house, yeah, you're limiting your options. But you're sort of in the short term, you're providing more certainty. Because right now there's plenty of uncertainty around the Michigan program. They've lost a lot of guys. You've got the whole NCAA thing looming and what is that going to look like and when is that bomb going to drop? And then to add in, you know, another, you know, hey, you're going to bring in whoever, Lance Leipold from Kansas or whoever you're going to bring in, Brian Kelly from LSU, uh, you know, you, you're you adding in one more piece of uncertainty and then this guy's going to bring in all of his, his assistants and he's going to bring in his system and you have to learn new terminology and all that kind of stuff. If you do keep it internal and you keep the system the same and you're, you know, you're higher, you're whatever. I was going to say you hire your linebackers coach to be the defensive coordinator, but uh, he's also not uh, no longer with the program for different reasons. Uh, they, you know, you, you hire someone internal to run the defense. You keep the terminology the same. You're providing sort of a level of comfort and familiarity for the players. So on that front, yeah, it probably helps keep the, the whole team together more. But, you know, I haven't seen a big mass exodus yet by any means in the, in the portal. I don't know that anyone's gone into the portal the last couple of days for Michigan doesn't mean they're going to stay there over the next month. And especially after spring ball, there might be a little bit of a sort of a feeling out process, but it's also going to depend on what do they do? Who are they hiring on, you know, in terms of a defensive coordinator, are you bringing in someone new? Or are you going to hire, I assume the offense is going to still be sort of the Sharon Moore offense. And, you know, you might bring in someone else to help run it, or you're promoting someone internally to help run it. But there's, you know, there are pros and cons to everything. If, if, you know, keeping things internal always worked great. Uh, Ohio State would have had incredible special teams last year. That not necessarily not necessarily the case. And if going outside always worked well, then you wouldn't have all these, you know, really cautionary tales of, of you know the co the coaching's the coaching uh, realms and or coaching uh, eras that have really fallen apart because of bad co uh, bad coordinator hires or bad assistant hires. There is no sure thing. That's what makes this such a kind of dicey time for, for Sharon Moore to be taking over. Which leads right into the, the next question of whether or not he is ready for this. Now, he has been the head coach four times for Michigan and obviously is very highly thought of throughout the, the industry. So he has some good experience now that's just day of game coaching. Ryan Day had three games as the head coach in 2018. Before he took over, he got a glimpse of what he could do. So there is that that uh, experience aspect that they have. But again, I go back to you never know how good a hire is going to be. They hired Rich, Rich Rodriguez, who was very experienced as a head coach. They hired Brady Hoke, who was very experienced as a head coach. And those did not go as well. And so I, people will say this isn't, Ohio State, Michigan, these aren't places you learn on the job as a head coach. And I would say, what is, what is the alternative for Michigan in, in this situation? No, it's ideally you, you don't want to learn on the job, but who, who are they going to go out and get at this point in time? Because I, while I think Michigan, obviously, the, the name is still there and it will, will be there. I mean, you're just coming off of a national championship. Why wouldn't you want to come to Michigan right now? But I think there is a level level of concern in terms of it. if if you're a national coach somewhere, somewhere else and you're looking to make that jump, either a jump up or a jump over to Michigan, you're going to want to know like what's coming. And so maybe that makes them a little less attractive than they would be normally. I see this as a situation where Sharon Moore, one of two things is going to happen. He's going to bridge the gap and, and to the next coach, or he's going to bridge the gap to himself and get them through this darkness. I don't know which it's going to be, but at this point, it's kind of a um, it's it's a less expensive alternative, you know, with, with the contract that he's getting. But I also don't know that there's a huge danger here because the way I see it, you're you're getting into a, a situation where there is going to be a draw a fallback a little bit. Whether whether there are no NCAA infractions or there are plenty of NCAA infractions, you've lost too many people, you've lost too many coaches. 
some you're going to take a little bit of a step back. Now that may only be nine and three or ten and two, but I don't think it's going to be a national championship. So, um, you, whether you brought whoever you bring in, I think there's going to be a step back. But now with Sharon Moore there, um, like I said, I, I think he's either going to be the guy for the long term, or he's going to get them through this darkness, or um, be swallowed up in it, and then it'll be somebody else. Because I, I do expect the NCAA to come down and. We don't know what's going to happen to him yet with the NCAA, but I don't see a lot of danger in this hire. I think this is the safe hire. This is mm -hmm. the hire where you're not going to have a you know a team revolt that you didn't hire their guy. You're not going to have a fan base revolt. I mean, you've seen people sort of questioning the hire, and that's fair. I mean, he's coming in with. You know, they, they have spent the last few years deriding Ryan Day's resume and he was born on third base and he came in as someone who had been an offensive assistant and an offensive coordinator and then served as an interim head coach for three games. And, uh, you know, boy, uh, which base is Sharon Moore on right now, Tony? Well, that it's sh 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 too soon to say. And Ryan Day also did not inherit a defending national championship program either. So, Ryan, you know, Sharon Moore may be rounding third a little bit in this situation. Uh, but either way. You're right. I think this is a situation where this is not as attractive a job as you might think, given everything, because, yes, Michigan's the defending national champions. That is not the historical norm there. So now you're you're getting in right at the top of the market. You know, you, they, they tell you to buy low and sell high. You're, whoever has taken this job, and obviously now it's Sherrod Moore, you're buying at the absolute peak of the market that – Michigan has not been at this level since 1948 as an undisputed national champion. Also, you've got the NCAA stuff looming. Also, you have, you know, potentially some impact on Sharon Moore as well. I think one thing that is a little bit of insurance for Michigan is if the NCAA stuff is going to be significant, Sharon Moore is probably tied up in there somewhere. So at that point, Moving on to the next person, once you have some certainty, might be a little bit easier. I, I think we don't know the specifics yet. I think I have, you know, I, I have viewed for a couple months now the likelihood of the coordinators being completely in the dark. Like, if you want to tell me Jim Harbaugh is completely in the dark, has no idea. I, I mean, maybe, maybe. But the guy who's talking to the coordinators on the sidelines during the game, you want to tell me that they, they just, listen, I don't know. This is just my magical friend, Connor, and he just tells me what to do, and I, I, I don't question it. He just, he's magic. I mean, you can tell me that, and maybe we'll see what the NCAA can prove uh, when, when, it's, when all's comes, you know, when all is said and done. But, you know, we've, we've talked about that in that context for a while, and Last week, I was listening to uh, Split, Split Zone Duo, which is one of the national podcasts, and um, Richard Johnson from Sports Illustrated is on there. And he has been, he's done a lot of reporting from the Michigan side of things on this. And so he's been pretty plugged in. You know, this is not, uh, you know, oh, he's a hater. This is not, you know, he has, he has been doing a lot of the reporting and is pretty well sourced within the Michigan program. And he said the same thing last week, which was like, you could tell me maybe Harbaugh is not. You know, maybe he didn't know, but it's probably going to be a pretty hard sell to that neither of the coordinators had any idea this was going on. And so then you get into, and you got to remember, Sharon Moore has already served a one game suspension, self imposed suspension for cheeseburgers, et cetera, uh, which is the COVID era violations. So you, you already have, you know, you already have, you already been in detention once. For this, so you know, for a so completely separate thing, I am going to be very interested to see what the future looks like for Sharon Moore. I mean, and for Jesse Minter, and for Jim Harbaugh, and everyone else who is you know potentially tied up in this. There's a lot of uncertainty on all of those guys in terms of what the future might look like. And for Minter and Harbaugh, you know, they're they're off, uh, they're off in uh, you know Switzerland or uh, Venezuela or wherever you go to uh, get out of the reach of the feds, but. You know, I think for Sharon Moore, there there is some question about what his future is going to look like when all of this is said and done. The NFL has no extradition to the NCAA, so um, good luck with that. I do wonder if it means 
more or more significant punishments for Michigan if you don't come and talk to us. Like if Jim Harbaugh and Jesse Minter refuse, does that lend itself to larger punishments? Or if they do and they, they're they seen as lying, it's like, well, you can't punish. There's nothing you can do about them lying. So like you're going to hand them a show cause. That's fine. They're in the NFL. I, I do wonder what happens if, if Sharon Moore gets a show cause and generally that's a thing where it just means you, nobody's going to hire you. But if you already have the job, like they know they're already hiring somebody that has had NCAA infractions. So Michigan is going in into this with eyes wide open in terms of who, who they have chosen. And I'm not saying he's a bad guy or he's a crooked or, or anything like that, but the NCAA may say, hey, this guy has, has done this. We can prove this. We can do that. And then so there's going to be a show cause. And I know a lot of people hear the word show cause and think, well, you can't coach anymore. That just means you're done. It doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that you've got to uh, you've got to go to meetings. You've got to um, the, the school has to show why you should be employed and show to you. And then if something happens in in addition to that, then the punishments are going to be even more harsh. So I do wonder, Tom. Give me a give me a percentage that. Sharon Moore doesn't actually coach a game at Michigan next year. Sharon Moore doesn't coach a game at Michigan in yeah. the 2024, 2024 season. Yeah. So this year. Okay. I, I think it's, I think it's very low. I, I think he's, you know, there's, there's a lot of different factors going into this. One of which is that the notice of allegations hasn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whenever that comes out, then Michigan has 90 days to respond and then there's more time. So you might not even have the punishments levied, even if there is even if there is like significant finding and boy, he's he's just dead to rights and they they have him nailed to the wall. That might not happen before the start of the year. So I, I think the odds that he doesn't coach a game are, are very low. I mean, you want to say five percent or something like that. Sure. I think that the odds that he has he faces some kind of substantial additional punishments you know whether you know is that six games like jim harbaugh missed uh this past season does does he miss some period of games or something like that moving forward i think there's a decent possibility of that you want to call that 50 50 or better sure i don't i don't think we're anywhere near a hundred percent but i just it just feels like the more you dig into this the more likely it is that you know plausible deniability only gets you so far and i don't i don't know how plausible the night the, the deniability is going to be for him and jesse minter leaving for the nfl you know I mean, maybe he wanted to go back to the nfl but jim harbaugh leaving for the nfl yeah maybe he wanted to go back to the nfl but you know there's just there's been a lot that has sort of lined up with well if they did know something significant was coming, like this is a lot like what the reaction would look like. You know, it's if everyone from Michigan was staying, if Jim Harbaugh was staying for another year and Jesse Minter was staying for another year, I might really start to question some of my thoughts on what I'm sort of expecting to have happen. But we, you know, we've been talking about like, hey, you, you might see guys jump to the NFL. You might see coaches leave. You might see. And, and, you know, the whole time you're getting told by the, you know, the Michigan folks that, you know, oh, no, 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 He wants to stay at Michigan. He really wants, he, he, bro, 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 tell me, trust me, bro. He totally wants, he, the contract's right there. Bro, he's just looking for a pen. It's, a, you know, no, listen, man, it's, he's, any day now he's going to sign this contract extension. And at, at some point, when you're sort of expecting certain things to happen and you're seeing all of those things happen, it's like, well, it this all makes me feel like I'm sort of going to get what I'm expecting in, you know, 6 to 12 to 18 months, whenever that process comes down. I believe the first reports of the contract extension being on the verge of uh, getting signed, maybe October 9th, was, <laughs> if I went back and looked at, on Twitter, uh, the first reports around then, like, hey, big news, there's a contract extension coming. And it was always just within within arm's reach. 
I'm wondering if the reason the deal with Sharon Moore got signed so quick, quickly is because he didn't ask for immunity. I'm guessing that's that was probably one of those things. That, yeah, you, you've got the boilerplate contract. No, you're not getting immunity. Uh, you can't even, don't even, it's not, we're, we're not doing that. All right. Um, and it's just a shame because, uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh, if they, if they would have acquiesced, he would still be at Michigan. I think everybody knows that. I think that is so clear that uh, and then Ward Manual, just let him go. That dastardly Ward Manual, the the world's greatest villain for not bringing Jim Harbaugh back, who never, never actually wanted to go to the NFL. He just wanted to window shop, Tom. Did you know that? Just window shop. That's all. I know interest. I've... I've heard that, that, you know, listen, yes, he did technically actively pursue NFL jobs three off seasons in a row. But listen, he's just, you know, who among us, Tony, who among us hasn't dreamed of living in Minneapolis and, uh, you know, come back, come back home and told everyone I was moving to Minneapolis. And then, you know, lo and behold, then I didn't. And that's just because I didn't want to. It's not because of any other things. And now... Who among us, Tony, does not want to go coach the Los Angeles Chargers? I, I, I've dreamed of this since I was a young man, and now here, here I am. I, I think what I'm going to advise, and I'm sure there are Michigan people watching this, and here's what I'm going to tell you. Go back to November 1st. Go back to November 10th. Whatever day you want to pick and listen to one of our shows and then pick whatever Michigan site or whatever Michigan podcast you want and tell me which one has been more correct, which one was more reflective of what is about to come. Like, watch us predict the future in some ways. And, you know, the people who've been telling you, like, this is nothing, this is nothing, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sure feels like there's something there. And, you know, I mean... I, I know it's very easy to say, well, you guys cover Ohio State. You're just a bunch of haters. Like, Tony and I both picked Michigan to beat Ohio State this year. Tony and I both picked Michigan to win the national championship game against Washington in pretty much exactly the way it happened. Like, we we are plenty objective about this kind of stuff. We're able to look at it from a sort of rational, take it a little bit of a distance. You can, the signs are there if you if you want to read the mm -hmm. signs. There's just, I think there's a lot of people who don't want to read the signs right now and who don't want to be, you know, Bobby Bad Vibes when they've just won the national championship, but three weeks ago. Well, I mean, you can go way back before then when the the biggest question mark among the, in the Michigan program was where was the private investigator and how close relationship, close relation was he to Ohio State head coach Ryan Day? That was the focus for a long time while we were talking about actual things um but that's neither here nor there that is in the past Tom, i do want to go over so right now the final ap top 25 in terms of say hiring an assistant coach to be your head coach 10 of the top 25 teams their head coach was an assistant before um they took this head job do you uh hmm, i'm wondering if i should just ask you to give me as many of the 10 as you can, don't be. I see you searching right can, now. Can I, the can AP I just poll. can I just search the the names of the teams or no? Because I got to tell you, I don't pay a whole heck of a lot of attention to the postseason polls. Can I can I just search the poll or would you like me? Or do you want to run down the list and I will tell you internal hire or external or do I have to do this all by memory? I was I was thinking memory time. You are the only person in history who has ever gotten the ACC conference the divisions correct. So <laughs> if you can't just name. 10 head coaches of say the top 30 programs in the nation. And I'll give you, I'll give you the hint. One of them is SMU. Okay. So, uh, so I'm, I'm naming the 10 who have an internal hire or an external yep. hire. Uh, no, uh, for an assistant coach. Okay. An assistant straight who, to a head coach. Doesn't have to be internal. Had, okay. Okay. 10 who had an assistant coach straight to, okay. Georgia, I know did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kirby smart. Ryan day, obviously. Yep. Um, well, are we counting? Uh, are we counting uh, Sharon Moore right now? Is he no. on this list? No. Okay. No. Oh, oh boy. Uh, top twenty-five. Now I've got to think about all of the. Uh, let's see, Washington. No. Um. Alabama. No. Oregon did. Dan Lanning. Yes. Correct. That's um, three of the top ten right there. By the way. Liberty Liberty did not. 
Nope. I'm going through. I'm going through uh, New Year's Six bowl games. Penn State did not. Ole Miss did not. Well, I mean, Lynn Kiffin had been a head coach before, but he came mm-hmm. as an assistant. So does that count or no? No. No. Okay. No prior well, head coaching experience. No prior head coaching experience. Uh, where did it got Georgia? Florida State did not. All right. Now I think I'm out of uh, New Year's Six bowls. So now I'm in real trouble. Um. Missouri did not. Eli Drinkwitz, one year at Appalachian State. One year in App State, yeah. Um, Can you run me through, like, number 11? Oh, let's see. Dabo Sweeney was. Mm -hmm, Correct. That's number 20. Okay. Um, My memory for the – yeah, go go ahead. uh, Let's see. USC, uh, they, they were not top 25, no. Marcus Freeman for Notre Dame was. He would there be new. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but what about I, another Pac-12 team? Uh, i trying to think. Uh, Utah? Was, was Utah in the top oh, 25? Um, well, I don't know. I don't. That's one that I missed. I don't there's think only, so. There's only two Pac-12 teams right now, Tony, so I don't think it was either one of them. Uh, was, was Oregon State in the top 25, Jonathan Smith? Um, no, they did not no. finish. Okay. You said Utah. No, they did not finish. Okay. Um, this is a team that has now since moved to the big 12. It only narrows and lost slightly. their head coach. Oh, Jed fish. Jed fish yes. was Jed. Yeah. Well, he was, he was a first time head coach, right? Mm-hmm. Or was he? Yeah. First he was. time head coach at Arizona. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian had been a head coach before for Texas. Mm-hmm. How many more do I have? You've got. I've, I've, I'm going to give you Rhett Lashley at SMU since I mentioned SMU. Okay. You have, yeah. you have uh, three more schools, Tom. Three and more schools I, total, or yeah. three more schools yes. that have not. Okay, three more schools total. Um, three total. Is one of them Tulane? No. Okay. Because I know Willie Fritz had coached at Georgia Southern before. I can give you the conferences. This is uh, conferences. Well, th- okay. Yep. Go, go ahead. ahead. No. Um. Big Ten and Big Twelve. Big Ten and Big Twelve. Uh, Oklahoma, right? Yep. Yep. And that's, their last uh, two head, actually, their, their last, last head coaches, three, yeah. three. Yeah, because Bob been Stoops. Timers. Yep. Yep. So Oklahoma. Is that? Do I have one more Big Twelve or? Yes, one more Big Twelve. One, one, one more Big, Big 10. Twelve. All right. Uh, was it? Did Kansas finish in the top 25 or Kansas State? They both did, but they, they hired head they, coaches. Neither of them. Yeah, neither of them are first-time coaches. Let me just tell you how much I hate you for this, and I can't wait to pay you back on a future episode oh, of Buckeyes Tomorrow oh, Morning. Just um, wait. Just wait, Tom. Once you come about, up with the names. What about Ferl Mengus? Um, so a Big Ten team that finished in the top 25 – Kirk Ferentz, I guess, was a uh, yes. There you he, go. Yes, yes. Kirk Ferentz, despite being there for since so Moses was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then, one more Big Twelve team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who was good in the Big Twelve? And the answer is kind of everyone, but also kind of no one. Number sixteen. Number sixteen. Oklahoma State, right? There you go. Fin- Boom. Yeah, Mike Gundy. He is so- a man. He is like fifty-seven now. That, that he is actually um, born in '67, so whatever that is, Tom. No, he's he not, quite not quite fifty-seven. Not quite. Oh well, I forgot. I sorry, Tony. I guess I forgot what time of year Mike Gundy was born. Yeah. I apologize. He's almost fifty-seven. August twelfth. Uh, so I mean, that just gives you an idea that there are plenty of schools, and I think Georgia is a very good example of this. That you can hire an assistant. They did it. They did it before with Mark Richt, who was mm-hmm. an assistant at uh, what um, my FSU Miami. and oh, yeah, before that, yeah, and then Oklahoma. You mentioned Brent Venables, Lincoln Riley before that. So it's like you can do this. Um, so I, I think Michigan will find out how well they do this. Anything else? Anything else, Tom? Before we get out of here, I, I know that went a little bit longer than you were uh, anticipating, but that was your fault for not being able to name ten well-known head coaches. Yeah. That's that's on me, and uh, I'd like to apologize for everyone and assure you, don't worry. Justice is coming for Tony. 
much mm-hmm. much as uh, much as it may be for others justice is coming for tony i can't wait i i'm already i'm already plotting won't be on won't be on the morning show for uh tuesday we have a whole separate conversation to have there but oh don't worry it's it is coming you're going to be asking me like valence electrons and the, the number of protons. I mean, like, I don't, I don't know, Tom, I don't do algebra. So the answer is, that the will, answer is roll tide. <laughs> roll tide. So that will do it. If you have been watching this on the, the YouTube have yet, and you have not yet hit the thumbs up, please do so. We would appreciate that. And of course you can find us at the, any podcast platform of your choice. As you know, if you may be listening to one right now, you can also find us at BuckeyeHuddle.com where you can become a member and talk to us there and check out the message board, check out the uh, the coverage behind the scenes, behind the paywall. We would appreciate you uh, seeing you there. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you guys later.